basketball sound cool through this. <laughs> Welcome to tonight's uh, Spinner, Senator Sports Talk. I'm joined by head girls basketball coach Kristen, Kristen Missimore, along with Meredith Deaton, the sophomore, um, I, I would call her a, a all-around player, a, a guard slash forward, depending on where you kind of need her. Um, Kristen, talk to me a little bit about your season so far. You've had two games since we talked last. You had the Eastern game and the Orleans game. So talk to me a little bit about those. So we are now nine, nine and two. Um, we beat Eastern at Eastern to win the county, which was exciting for us. That was something we were working for in our goals this year. And then last night we went to Orleans that are number nine in 1A, and we struggled a bit, <laughs> and we fell short. And so we are now nine and two. Um, the one thing I did tell the girls tonight, though, is – or nine and three, sorry um, – We've lost three games, but all three are to ranked teams. Um, you know, we're, we're still working. We're still going to work every night to get better. And we still have some goals that we still want to reach. And so we're going to battle every night. Meredith, talk to me a little bit about your, your Eastern game. That is a county rival. It's a team that you've grown up playing with. You played with, you know, you've played Eastern every year since, what, about fourth grade. Um, you know, you're very familiar with the team. What's it like playing a team like that that you, that you are so familiar with? Um, I think it makes it more fun at some points, but then it also makes it more competitive. Like you want to do better, but don't want to embarrass yourself. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, you had nine points in that game. Um, a little bit of a struggle from the field just for the whole team in general. Nobody really, um, you know, stood out field goal percentage-wise. You, you were four of 12, but did get those nine points and were the leading scorer for the Senators, which I believe you've been every game this year. Um, you know, Eastern, not a real uh, friendly shooting gym, I would say. It's kind of a, a weird gym to, to shoot in. Um, what's, what's it like going to, to different places and having to, you know, be the leading scorer for the Senators? Mm, I don't know. I think it's important to not – I don't really try to focus on that. I try to share the ball as much as possible, but I think it's important for me to score too as well. So, What's your favorite gym to shoot in other than, than uh, T. Kermit Tower Gymnasium? What's your, what's your favorite one? I don't – <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I like – it doesn't really matter what gym. Whatever gym brings the most fans, I like to shoot in big-ass atmosphere. So. Okay. Okay. Um, so, Kristen, like I, like I talked about, you know, the it was a little bit of a struggle. You had Meredith, who was 4 of 12, and Jayla was 2 of 11, um, you know, from the field. It, just a not good shooting night overall. Just kind of a weird game in general if we were to really kind of, kind of put it out there. Right. Yeah, we um, – you know, I could tell the girls when we're not hitting shots, it makes everything harder. <laughs> um, you know, you got to play a little harder on defense. Um, you got to block out a lot better. Um, there's all those little things that you you really have to to do well when you're not putting it in the basket. Um, we've really been working on on trying to shoot more here since really since the Eastern game. We've really um, tried to give more time in practice to get more shooting in. Um, you know, we're still trying to tweak offenses and do some different things with our defense, but really try to give these girls times to, to get lots of shots up um, in practice and and get those things to start falling. Um, you know, Eastern was a win 42-38 with their last second shot that went in. It was um, a six-point different before that, but then they knocked in a two at the end to bring it to a four-point difference. Um, after that, you went to Eastern last night. Not probably the performance you you wanted going going into that game. Um, you know, it was it was a lot closer than the score really showed at the end of the game. Um, but give me some of your your good takeaways from that. What what are you what are you pleased about with that Orleans game? I was, we did like I told the girls. We went over. I went step by step through the beginning of the game, and just the little things that if we would have done just a tad better. You know, we turn the block out, but maybe we're not pushing to block out, um, you know, um, on defense, making sure, um, you know, we're keeping them and stopping them a little higher on a fast break, not letting them get so low. Um, we talked more tonight a little bit, um, which seems like we're really rushed because we got a game tomorrow night. <laughs> and I wanted to shoot and everything else. But, um, you know, thinking about help defense and doing a three-man help rotation and not always just sliding over and being that help from help side. I know one time I – in specific, I was, you know, I, I told Meredith not to leave Cali. Yeah. Um, and so then that causes problems for your help defense. And, and so we, we had some issues with that. Um, 
I, I overall the girls never gave up and like you said the score really doesn't show what the game looked like I mean I look you know there's a few times we were within five yeah um, and then you know maybe we had a turnover or maybe we missed a shot and you know I tell the girls every time we have a turnover or we miss a shot it's really a four-point turnaround we are losing two points they're gaining two points that's four points every time we make those mistakes we <laughs> We had a ton of turnovers, which, you know, <laughs> each one of those could be, you know, considered four points each, actually, if you think about yep. that. Um, so when I talk to the girls, I'm like, girls, we can actually look at 40 points that we kind of gave away on turnovers, not counting missed shots. Um, but th they were thing they're things I, that we can fix. Um, you know, we uh, – it took us a while to get used to Callie's long arms on that zone. And, you know, once they I'm, got it, I'm it gonna <laughs> I'm going to throw a stat out to you that I just oh I just no. got because Orleans, <laughs> the, the game just came back. Right. They had 33 deflections. Oh, yeah. I mean, that I is that is huge. And they are you're, – you're exactly right. You know, they're a long team. And I said it during the broadcast last night while we were there with, with Ryan. Um, you know, they get their hands in the passing lane all the time. Right. I mean, there wasn't a pass last night that you guys were able to complete that they weren't in the passing lane. Um, right, you know the the whole game. Right, I think we we got to get back to where we attack the player and you know we step around. We were trying to stay too far back and trying to you know pass around those long arms, and that's hard to judge yeah. how long our arms are. And um, so we talked a little bit about that tonight. But that you know once I remember as a player one time I went to Simmons State and we were playing Evansville Bossy, and I never will forget. I my father was coaching <laughs> me and. I, I went in the game, and I finally came over to him, and I said, I can't get it around him. And he's like, get up to him, step around, get close to him, and step around. And so that's what I've got to get our whole team to do is realize just because they got long arms, you really have to attack them more. You can't stay farther away from him. You're going to get yourself – it's hard to judge those long arms. Right. right. Now, Callie did a great job up top of that zone on us. And once we figured it out and got settled down a little bit um, – but we had dug ourselves a hole at that point, and we were trying to dig out. Yeah, yeah. Meredith Kelly um, also guarded you a little bit last night. They kind of switched around on you, different different players here and there. Um, you know, she's a familiar player. You've grown up playing against her, you know, kind of the same same thing as the, the Eastern question that I asked you. You know, you've played with her. She knows your game. You know her game. How do you how do you go into a game like that? What Do you do, you do anything different? Do you take the ball more at her? Do you, do you pull back? Do you try to do something new? Um, I, like – kind of know her skill set so I know what she's kind of weak in and stuff I try to attack those things but I don't know I try to not to change too much up but yeah <laughs> <laughs> Meredith the, the the player of many words tonight so far <laughs> um so so Meredith one thing that you do really well you've done really well throughout the season is get into the lane and get free throws you've been fouled you know you go to the free throw line you're able to do that last night as a team the the whole team only shot four four free throws. Um, you know, how, how did your game change last night compared to other games that you've been in? You know, you, you just didn't get to the line last night like like normal. Yeah, I think everyone struggled with, like, finding the little holes and stuff that we usually attack. With them in a zone, it's hard to, like, see those little openings and stuff. But I think this season I've struggled a little bit, like, trying to drive. I've been staying out shooting a lot. My dad gets on to me for that. <laughs> so, <laughs> uh, yeah, I feel like – I need to switch some things up a little bit with driving more, and the whole team can as well. So, and that's one of those that it, it changes from game to game. Of course, you know, with an Orleans team with you know super long out on top, and then um, the Ralph girl who, I'll be honest, you know, I, I scouted them a little bit before the game, and I didn't see I didn't see her at all. And then um, you know she hadn't even started until the last two games. And then she comes in and drops 17 on you guys. I mean, it, it, that's just somebody that I, I don't know if you prepared for her at all. If you if you had any idea that she was even gonna gonna do that. I mean, it, it well, the games that I went to two of their games and I had three films on them, <laughs> <laughs> and um, she hadn't done a lot. Um, I knew she'd come off the bench and she'd actually shot some threes. Yeah. Um, but she went in last night and battled underneath like I had not seen her do. Right. Um, and she did a good job. Um, and, you know, that's something that, that you know, we've got to be able to adjust to even if we didn't know that was coming. We, you know, we've got to be prepared. And that's one thing. We let her get on that block and, you know, we got to we got to work on, you know, people get under there and get them out of there. Um, and, you know, that 
she got us. <laughs> <laughs> at, at one point in the game, Meredith, you got caught on her kind of on a switch underneath, and it, it was one of those. She she is a, a a great player when she gets you know on that block, you know, and she she gets her back, you know, into whoever's there. And and Meredith, you were doing a great job with with what you could, but she just overpowered you and went right yeah. to the bucket. <laughs> yeah. And, th and that's the thing, you know, throughout the year, there haven't been too many girls that we've played against, Meredith, that, that have been able to do that to you. You've, you've done a great job, you know, in the post of being able to kind of hold your own, you know, not being the, the tallest girl on the team or the biggest girl on the team, but you can, you can pretty much guard all five positions. And last night, the Ralph, she just was too much. Yeah. I don't think we were expecting her to be as physical as she was, and, but I thought she did a really good job, like, playing her position and stuff, so. And she, she at some point, she was even handling the ball out top, right. which was yeah. – and I think that's one thing we talked about tonight at practice is we can't let them get on that block. Like yeah. we've got to we got to start playing defense before they get to the block and get the ball. Like we've got to, you know, we have to anticipate and and think about where they're you know when they're coming down on a break or you know she on out of bounds plays she got down there on us and we've got to keep her out of you know we got to keep players like that out of there. Yeah, so. yeah, definitely. You know, uh, coach, you, you're from a basketball family. It's it's kind of you grew up in it. You didn't really have a choice. <laughs> Meredith, Meredith's kind of the yeah, same, same way. way. <laughs> um, she really doesn't have a choice. Her, her dad, you know, quite a, quite a basketball player here. It, it's her whole family. Her dad, you know, still coaches um, the elementary boys. What's it like, Meredith, growing up in a basketball family where you, where you know, you've got those expectations? Um, it kind of puts a lot more pressure on yourself, but I think it's fun to like try to achieve the goals that were set before you. So yeah. Do, do, I know your dad. So does he have like a, a board written with like his points and you know, hey, this is how many you need to get um, here. No, but he tells us as kids a lot his memories that he has. Yeah. <laughs> and and what's it what's it like playing for you know your your parents, Meredith? You played for your dad. Um, you know, Kristen, you played for your dad. You know, what what's that like as a as a student athlete? You know, having that that kind of father figure over you all the time is it a is it a, a positive is it something hard you to this one <laughs> you can take it <laughs> um it's stressful um i played for my dad of course four years in high school and i was the one whether i did it or not i was the one that was the example and and you know my dad was not a yeller but i was the one that he would use to be like okay now you got you know and um just i mean Many, 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 many. I remember my mom, we sat at the dinner table and the salt shakers were the guards. And <laughs> yep. The, you know, we had carrot sticks and, you know, we had all kinds of stuff that, that we were talking basketball at the dinner table. And that's where I learned a lot, you know. And then, um, you know, the rides home, you know, after practice. And I remember I just loved it when I got my license. I didn't have to hear <laughs> it after. But my dad wasn't a yeller, but it was just um, that was our life. That's all I knew. You know what I mean? I remember yeah. – um, I mean, we were so into basketball. I remember somebody doing something on a Saturday night that wasn't going to a game, and I thought, those people are weird. <laughs> like, what do you do? You know, you're supposed to go to a basketball game. Um, but, no, I mean, it's just it's just been my life and how I've grown up. And, um, I mean, um, it is different. It puts more pressure, I think. But I also um, – it made me understand what needed to be done. Meredith knows what needs to be done to be a good player. She's in here when school's not in, and she doesn't know. I know this all the time, but people tell me that, you know, she's in here <laughs> shooting extra, working out. You know, we may take some time off here over Christmas. I guarantee you this girl will be in the gym here. She'll be working, and it shows on the floor, um, and she keeps herself in shape. She ran cross country this year to – to stay in shape for basketball and you could tell she's got endurance i mean she can she can hang in there in a game now so um she works at it but i think a lot of that's her family backing her up too and it, that that for me as a coach is just wonderful <laughs> <laughs> meredith are you glad that your 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 dad isn't coaching you in high school or um, is it, it it's kind of a double-edged sword your dad isn't coaching be careful, you he might be listening. Yeah. i'm <laughs> sure i'm sure he's listening <laughs> so it, it's it's one of those double-edged swords you know you're used to your dad you know all the time but having a different coach it also allows you to expand what your what your knowledge base is because that new coach is going to give you something new yeah i mean he's coached me more in softball before but i've always told him that I didn't like him as my coach, <laughs> but I don't mind him as my coach, actually. I feel like it gives me, like, different – like, he gives me different feedback than what someone else would. He's a little bit more harsh on yourself, like, on me, but 
I think it will be good for me in the long yeah. run. So. Yeah, those those parents are always brutally honest. <laughs> they <laughs> might get Christmas present now. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, so Coach, you kind of alluded to it a little bit. You know, West Washington being the 1A school, small, um, you've got a lot of – two, three sport athletes. Meredith, how does how does that affect you? You know, you were a volleyball player. You went to cross country this year, still playing basketball, softball coming up. You know, what what does that do do for you? How does it how does it help? I guess is the the best way to phrase that. Um I think that like cross country this year it definitely helped me stay in shape and it helped my endurance for the game like as a whole. And then just like switching from sport to sport per season, it helps me like not get burnt out like I hear people from big schools where they play basketball all year round and I feel like I would get so burnt out on that like I don't know it's good to like work different muscles do keep your mind on different things so I gotcha. think it helps me gotcha. and I will agree with that 100 percent um I played softball and basketball and also when I have talked to college coaches whether it was helping my daughter or whoever college coaches like they love Two, two and three sports. Oh, yeah. I mean, they love those kids because they're kind of a special kid that can put it all together and continue and not just, you know, um, you know, not knocking the kids that are just playing one sport. But I know colleges, they really, really look at those two-sport kids when they're doing their recruiting. But And I agree with Meredith. They, uh, they use different muscles. Um, and I also think – like when I went and played softball when I was her age, and then when it came time back basketball, I was hungry and I was wanting it. Um, I know it's rough on these kids, especially in the summer, because you know I'm trying. Everybody to get wants them. their time. Yeah, and I've I've learned <laughs> from last summer how I'm going to try to schedule this summer. Um, you know, and and just during basketball season, the one thing I do worry about is the girls basketball's rough on your legs oh yeah and to try to make sure we keep their legs when it comes to you know certain games and sectional time and all that um it, it's hard for them to balance and they do i feel like they do a really good job of, of trying to balance and um and then i mean and you know she's strong in all her sports yeah so she's she's doing something right <laughs> <laughs> so let's talk a little bit about your upcoming schedule. You've got Crothersville tomorrow here, which is a varsity-only game. And then um, next – is it next Tuesday, I believe, yes. that you have Springs Valley. Um, what, do you, what do you know about those two teams? Um, Crothersville, um, they're struggling a bit. Um, I'm hoping we can come in here and, and relax and these girls can, you know, um, be strong tomorrow night and we can get a good, strong win. Um, Springs Valley – uh, beat Orleans. I went to that game. Um, they, 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 they are very well coached. They have um, really good set offenses. A lot of back screens. Um, I've got two or three tapes on them too. I've been watching. <laughs> um, so now, and I know Orleans is all. He sent me his Springs Valley tape today because they beat Orleans. If we could beat Springs Valley and Orleans beat us, that's three of us with one loss. Yeah. So that would put us all in a good position. Then of course we still have Crawford. So I mean, I I really feel like you know we can we can compete with Springs Valley. We'll have to see. Um, you know, being home is going to help. Um, you know, we're learning as we go, and hopefully these things that we're learning, and then we can get hot and start putting this ball in the basket and, and get us a win against Springs Valley. And, you know, one of our goals is we want to be at the we want to be at the top for conference, and the Springs Valley game is going to be big because, I mean, we still have Crawford to play, and, um, you know, you always got Paoli still, and so we've still got, we've still got a struggle um, with our conference, but I still think we're in the hunt. I don't think we're out of it. Meredith, what do you, you know, not so much Crothersville, but Springs Valley. Those girls you've you've grown up with, also, um, you know, very familiar with the Carnes girls. Um, you know, what, what's your thought going into those games? Um, Maddie Carnes is probably the most athletic girl I've ever played against. So <laughs> I would agree with that 100%. Yeah, I I think it's fun playing against her, though. I mean, if you put pressure on her, she's a lot taller than probably anyone on our team. Yeah. But I think that if you can shut her down, you also have Macy Eckerty who has played on my team before. She's a really good guard, but I think we can compete with them as long as we play good. And yeah, a defense thing. 
Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so that brings me to my to my next question for you defensively. Um, you know, last night was was a little bit of a struggle defensively. It seemed like Orleans was kind of able to get what they what they wanted, but then Eastern, you know, was was the opposite. They couldn't really run their offense against your defense. How, what do you see that's the difference between those two games? I think Orleans was very strong, and I think when they make a move to the basket, we got to be stronger at no, you're not. I'm going to play defense and I'm going to stop you from – and we'd actually even worked over the weekend and on Monday of really moving your feet and turning people um, without using your hands um, and reaching. And I think we just – we've got to keep working at that. Um, Orleans was just – you know, they they barreled down and they'd go. Um, and I think that was one of our main differences. And these girls also talked me into starting out in the zone. <laughs> <laughs> I I saw that. That was a one two two zone I that you started you, off in. Yeah. Hadn't seen you, anybody, that yet this year. Any, anybody that knows a Pritchett mess more, there's never been a zone. <laughs> a zone and I said, girls, we could, and it wasn't bad. I mean I told the girls it, it wasn't horrible. There was we we didn't block out in it. it um, it's a, a zone yeah. is a hard thing to to get your rebounds out of because when you're playing man to man, you find your person. Right. When you're in a zone, it's find find somebody in your right. zone, and there may be two or three of them in your zone. Yeah, you got to take somebody and start pushing. Yeah. So it, it wasn't horrible. It's just I looked up the clock at, or at the scoreboard last night, and it was eight to nothing, and I was like, okay, <laughs> we're done with that <laughs> yeah, for now. Time to come out um, of that zone. You know, and I'm not saying we're, we won't try it again sometime, but. Um, no, they, they really worked hard on it in practice, and we actually had where we were dropping on the weak side well, and they were talking, and um, the really the one thing that got us was just we didn't block out in yeah. it. And if we could get, learn to block out in it, I think it would be something we can really use. I, I definitely agree. Meredith, you've got the open air. You can you can say anything you want to anybody you want, any shout-outs you want to give. <laughs> Remember, Christmas is coming. Yeah, Christmas is coming. <laughs> I mean, uh, no, at, at least give one to Santa. I mean. <laughs> uh, I don't know. I have nothing to say. Really? <laughs> I figured you'd give one to, to Sharon Hammond. I'm sure she's listening. I mean, oh, yeah. <laughs> Mammal. <laughs> Thanks for yelling for me. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. There you go. Well, <clears throat> thank you guys very much for joining us. That's all the time that, that we've got tonight. Um, definitely join in tomorrow. Live stream will be with the game for Crothersville and your Tuesday game with Springs Valley. But radio and live stream tomorrow here at T. Kermit Tower Gymnasium. So be sure to come out, fill the stands. Um, but if you're not able to, you've got us on the radio and on live stream. So, Coach, thank you for your time. And we'll be back with the boys coach here in just a moment. In 2012, the Washington County Community Foundation began working on its next big initiative, Education Matters. The goal of Education Matters is to increase the educational attainment of adults residing in our county. The initial focus has centered on adults with some college and no degree. With the assistance of scholarships and a peer mentoring program, the foundation began helping adults return to college to complete their degree or obtain a certification in 2013. Realizing that strength lies in numbers, Washington County partnered with Clark, Floyd, Harrison, and Scott Counties to create Education Matters Southern Indiana. This initiative continues to build. As your American Family Insurance agent, Michael Long can offer you dependable auto, home, business, and life insurance, as well as other insurance products. He's big enough to serve and small enough to care. His team and their unique backgrounds, trainings, and experiences have prepared them well to help meet your insurance needs. Additionally, as residents of your community, they understand how important it is to be there for you. Together, they are building strong partnerships that help everyone succeed. When it comes to your car insurance, you deserve more than a card tucked in your glove box. That's why American Family Car Insurance goes beyond a piece of paper or an app to give you smart, customized coverage and real peace of mind. No matter how your life changes, you can feel comfortable you will have the right auto insurance protection and support every step of the way. Not sure how much or what type of coverage is right for you? Michael Long is the person to talk to. Expertise, resources, commitment. 
At Sylvan Financial, we offer a team approach to financial planning, offering you a broader scope of expertise than you will likely find in any one person. Clients are our main priority, which is why we work to understand your unique circumstances and ultimately create a distinctive plan that provides a roadmap for your financial journey. Located in Mitchell, Indiana, they can be reached at 812-849-2670. That's 812-849-2670. In 2012, the Washington County Community Foundation began working on its next big initiative, Education Matters. The goal of Education Matters is to increase the educational attainment of adults residing in our out there, county. So. The initial focus has centered on adults with some college and no degree. No, with get me tonight. With yep, the assistance of scholarships and a peer <clears throat> mentoring program, the foundation began helping adults return to college to complete their degree or obtain a certification in 2013. Realizing that strength lies in numbers, Washington County partnered with Clark, Floyd, Harrison, and Scott counties to create Education Matters Southern Indiana. This initiative continues to build. There we go. Now you can hear me. Welcome everyone to Senator Sports Talk, where I'm now joined by Coach uh, Jamie Cummings, along with Ian Rosenbaum, the senior uh, Forward, power forward, yeah, what, you can say whatever that. you want to, however you want to call it. Um, you know, Jamie, it's been a while since I've got to talk to you, and I know um, last time we talked, I kind of jinxed you, so I'm not <laughs> nothing, no jinxes tonight. Um, talk to me about the the last couple of games that you've you've had. Um, you know, we haven't talked since uh, what was it, the Eastern game? It's, it's, yeah, that was the last time we talked. Okay. Um, so yeah, we played Paoli last Friday on the road. Um, I thought our guys really got after it, played played about as well as we played all year. We lost. There to the last second, they, they made one high off the glass, and that's, no. that's the way it goes. But uh, we, we guarded that shot well. We guarded well all night. Um, we had trouble scoring against their pressure, but, you know, we, we had them right where we wanted them. We had a chance on the road in the conference against a good team, good opponent, and uh, – thrilled the way we played Just yeah you came, came out, out a short. you came out really strong in that first quarter um you know really kind of kind of looked really good um you know ian you're you're here so i, I had you for 16 points that night that's a, a a pretty good night yeah it was a pretty good night if <laughs> i'd hit my bunnies yeah if i could have had a few more well but. <laughs> um i had meredith deaton on for the girls ian paoli is a team that you're you're familiar with it's a team that you've you've played a lot um, they don't have a, a whole lot of seniors on that team at the moment, but you've played with those juniors. Um, you know, what's it like playing against a team that you that you're super familiar with? Yeah, we played against that team basically my whole life, all the way through junior ball and elementary and stuff. And the Cole boys always played up, so it's been the same team. Um, I think both of us, both teams, we're about the same. We can match up pretty well. We haven't changed much over the years. Nobody's got any move-ins, but I think we match up pretty well with them, and we just let one slip away the other night. Um, you know, that's a, a 32-29 game, um, probably not, like, like you said, Coach, um, you know, not the, not the offensive output that you want, um, but it was, it was hard to get points. What are you, what's your, your magic number, if you were to put one out there? What's kind of your magic number that you're shooting for in a game? Well, I'd like to see us get, you know, 50 and them get 40. <laughs> I mean, I, I don't have a magic number. My magic number is one more than them. Yeah. You know, honestly, um, Different games will play a little faster, a little slower, so obviously you're going to score a little more or, or less. And, you know, people may realize this or not, the other team's trying to keep us from scoring. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, you know, I, I like 40 and 50 just to pick a number, um, but I don't know how many times we've hit 50, if, if any. I don't – I'm not a big – I don't care about that. Yeah. Again, I care about getting one more than them. I care about us getting better. I think we're getting better. Wins and losses does not – doesn't reflect that. Um, you know. Yeah, right. Right now, you know, you've got two losses that that could have been two wins. I mean, it, it <laughs> very easily we could have won both of those ball games. And then the Trinity Lutheran, we talked about that on Saturday night here back at home. You know, we didn't match up with them well. <laughs> Ian said it. You know, we match up well with Paley, and I do think we match up with some teams better than others. Trinity Lutheran being one that we do not. They they buzz around the court. They play really fast. They got five guys that are essentially the same player. They just run, 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 run. Everybody's got a green light to shoot it, so you got to get out and cover. 
a lot of space on the court, and that's, that's just not something we're real good at right now. We hope to get better and improve upon that going forward because I know a lot of teams are, are looking to space, you know, bring a guy like Ian out from under the bucket, make him garden space 20 feet, 22 feet from the rim. And when you start off, you know, ahead, you can you can dictate little <laughs> things yeah. what's going on. When you start off behind, now you just got to play catch up, and, and they've got you. And, you know, we kind of scrambled and chased, fought our way back, had the ball, six-point lead. Actually, Coach Halton was telling me to call timeout. He said, we're awful tired, call timeout. And about that time, and, and in my mind, we were on a roll, and we were going to score again. I got a little greedy. We're going to score right here, and then I'm going to burn one. And and then I'm already thinking that he comes up, puts a bug in my ear. He says, we're looking awful tired, burn one. And, and we, we missed it. And then they went down and got three-point play. So we went from six with the ball back down to nine after trailing by 11. So I missed that one. That's on me. Um, if I'd have thought a little sooner, maybe I'd have, you know, blew that one and, and we'd have set something up and got in another bucket. Ian, um, you know, you've gone through um, a few coaching transitions, you know, coming up through elementary and junior high, you were with your dad. Um, then you had Coach Sullivan last year. Now you've got Coach Cummings. Not not their their coaching styles, but different offenses from all of them. You know, how's it, how's that – what's that do to a player who, you know, has to go through three, three changes in their basically high school career? Um, I just think it takes a little time. Uh, I know the first week and a half of the season, it was my mind was really spinning, going every different direction of all the new sets we were having to put in this year. But I just think if you uh, takes a little time and you listen to what coach has to say about it, then I think it just kind of rolls right into it. You know, it, and it, it's one of those. Your your dad was a super defensive side of the ball, and and you know, and that's one of those that that transitions through you know whoever the coach is it doesn't it doesn't matter um and that's something that's really stuck with you guys as you've come into you know this year the defensive side of the ball there hasn't been a whole lot of breakdowns on the defensive side you know you guys have, have been able to transition that through talk to me a little bit about the defense that that you know has seemed to seem to roll through with you guys well uh in junior high uh, we're strictly a man team uh we just tried to outwork all the other teams we played, but now we transition to high school. We're getting some quicker guys we're playing against, so we got to sit back into a 2-3 zone and make them shoot and get the rebounds. But this year we're kind of sitting back in a 2-3 zone and playing man. just really depends on the team we're playing and how they match, match up with them. Um, you know, Coach, it, it's one of those where your your guys are playing playing tough every night, and you know sometimes they come out with the with the W, and other times they they don't. How do you keep the the emotions you know high and, and going in a positive direction? Because you're dealing with high school kids here, of course, and and you know they're <laughs> if they see something going wrong, they they go down quick. So well, yeah, that, that's that's really hard to do, <laughs> and, and hopefully we're just trusting the process, right? Um, like Ian said, the first week and a half. He's adjusted. He's he's figured it out. Somebody else maybe two and a half, three weeks. Somebody else maybe five weeks. We're, yeah. not, we're not there yet. Um, I, I know that. We're playing some uh, freshmen, quite a few minutes. Got one of them starting and uh, and holding. And Colton's going to get a lot of minutes. Hayden is coming off the bench. Um, not not got very much varsity experience. So those guys in particular, you know, going into Paoli was like, wow, this is this is different. And and it was different. It, it was. Those kids are tough, they're strong, they're nasty, they, they play really hard. They'll knock your head off and take the ball from you. And you got to adjust. Yeah. you got to see it once and taste it and then, you know, get a feel. And our seniors have been there, done that. It wasn't nothing new for them, but that was a brand-new experience for those younger guys. And, you know, I, I thought we did well. I, I was really proud of the guys that night. Um, I was disappointed Saturday. I felt like, you know, kind of – we did get kind of caught up in the emotion of, darn it, you know, we just lost that game and had a little bit of a meltdown here and, you know, just didn't get going and they got on the streak. We watched them on film. I don't know what they shot from the three, but it wasn't as good. What we saw on film is what it was here yeah. live and in person. So a little bit disappointed there. They made shots. You know, you got to give them the credit for that. And, and we just didn't defend it as well as we could have or should have. And it's tough to keep everybody positive and keep that energy high and going in the right direction. We talk about it. I hope my seniors are, are doing a good job of leading. And if they hear that, you know, negativity, they squash it in the locker room before it ever gets out on the court where I see it or feel it. And uh, just leaning on those guys to take care of some stuff behind the scenes. You know, it was alluded to a little bit there. You've got three seniors that are averaging over 30 minutes a game. 
um, you know, and, and that's that's a lot of minutes for, for a high school guy to play, you know, when you're playing two or three games a week. Um, you, you, everybody knows that your team has been a little banged up. Um, Ian's younger brother, of course, helps out on the on the JV. He would be a, a huge addition. Hasn't been cleared yet, as far as I know, um, to be able to come back and, and play. But how are you managing those those minutes with the, the guys that you have? Just trying to get through it one day at a time right now. We showed up, uh, I think it was Monday this week, we had nine guys physically able. Um, Battling sickness now. You yeah, know. You, you just I, I'm going to say it. You just can't seem to catch a break. You've got you know injured kids. You've got sick kids. It just doesn't seem to be working for you at the moment. <laughs> you know, you can you can pout about it, or you can just next man up and do your best. And that's that's what we're trying to do. You know, um, the good Lord's given us some challenges early, <laughs> and, and we're trying to get through it. And hopefully, it makes us a better, stronger team, stronger person at the end of the day, later in the year, and we can get through some of this. Uh, adversity we're dealing with now and become better for it it's it's hard to to get there and it's painful sometimes but uh, you know the minutes you know we're, we're not really trying to manage them we just got guys on the floor <laughs> that we think can help us win a ball game and then whoever shows up tomorrow is the guys we're looking at to win that ball game if, gotcha. if someone gets banged up then we're, we're trying to next man up and we've dealt with some of that we've had some people leave the team and you know, that's not fun. That's adversity. I just think the guys that are sticking around doing their part. Ian's been here, you know, obviously for four years now. It's his fourth year, and they're doing a great job. Uh, some guys have chose not to be a part of it. Some guys can't help it. They're sick. You know, we can't control it. Yeah. We just can't control that. Um, you got to take care of what you can control. Let's talk about your upcoming game. You play Friday at Borden in the holiday tournament, and you get um, Borden, who is, who is the host school. So what's, what's your, your mindset going into that game? Well, uh, you know, that's a good team. <laughs> they got some good players. Uh, Nash can, can shoot it from anywhere. He's, you know, he can shoot it from here and make one in board. I, I was going to say as soon as he pulled it in the parking lot. Yeah. A lot of times I say as soon as you walk in a gym, but I'm pretty sure he yeah. can shoot it from the parking lot. Yeah, he can shoot it from the bus. Um, we're going to have to get out and guard him, challenge him, disrupt him. You know, make he's going to score his points. He's yeah. going to get looks, but we got to limit those. we got to limit good looks. we got to be smart with the ball. I think we've – We've done a real good job taking care of the basketball. We got to um, handle their pressure. They get out, stretch the floor a little bit, and uh, just you know we got to make some open shots. We've we've struggled. It's, it's <laughs> kind of become a little bit of a joke. Um, Ian, Ian, <laughs> Ian joked about Ian, it as soon as he sat down. Ian, Ian's probably rolling his eyes, saying, "Come on, coach." <laughs> but uh, we we missed a lot inside, and it, it's no one person. It's all of us. We're yeah. getting we're getting good looks. We're getting the ball where we want. We, we're getting it in the right guy's hands. And sometimes it's just not going in. We're changing the shot just a little bit or, you know, hoping to get that foul and the referee's not whistling it. And, it's, again, you cannot control that. You can control how hard you play and your eyes stay on the on the bucket, your chin's up, and you're just trying to make the shot and go through the contact. Ian, don't give away any of the, the game plan that Coach has in, but you, you've played, you know, Kaysom Nash before. How, how have you stopped him in the past? Well, uh, here in the past, uh, you kind of got to pick your battles. Uh, do you want him to beat you or do you want somebody else to beat you? And I think we just got to play defense on him and uh, make somebody else on the team go off. If they go off for 30 or 40 points and they beat us, we'll take it, but just not let the Nash boy beat us. I got gotcha. you. Gotcha. Who is the, the – so not looking past Borden at all, but who would you like to see in that second game? You know, you've got a game, an in, in Eastern game that was, was a winnable game for you that you could have a rematch of that, or the, the county rival in Salem that you guys knocked off the first game of the season? I don't think it really matters. If we're in the championship, I just want to win it. So <laughs> whoever you put in front of us, we're going to try to win the win that championship. So I don't think it really matters. That, that's a very good answer. Coach, what, what about you? If you were to, to get to pick – who, who, who do you want to see again? I, I just want to see somebody on uh, Saturday about 7.30. <laughs> there you go. There I, you go. That's I, it. I don't have a, a favorite or a wish. You know, I just hope we're there. And we, we're just looking at that Friday night game, trying to get past it with a victory, move into Saturday, and uh, we'll come in and get a game plan. We, we kind of already know what we want to do. We, I've watched, you know, some film on what we did the first time against both of those opponents. So, they got the same advantage that we do as far as that goes. They they know exactly. Yeah. I'm not watching someone else play that they're matching up with different personnel. They're watching our games, how they match up with us, what could they do differently. So, you know, I I don't care who we play. <laughs> I like to play in a championship game in, in set it. Um, I, I don't know off the top of my head, Ian, have you guys, since you've been in high school, have you played in the championship game of the holiday tournament? 
I don't believe so. I, I was thinking that you guys you guys hadn't, so that would be a, a good run for you guys to be able to get in the championship yep. game there. Um, you know, after the, the holiday tournament, which is, of course, this weekend, you get a little bit of time off, um, you know, and then you're in another ho a true holiday tournament over um, Christmas break at Northeast Dubois. You know, looking ahead, that's you're going to play two games back-to-back -back on Friday, Saturday night, and then you're going to go there and play two games in one day. Um, you know, how do you how do you how do you build your your guys' legs up to be able to do that? And then second part to you, Ian, what what are you? <laughs> how does it feel to get your legs built up by coach to be ready to play that amount of you know that amount of those amount of games in that amount of time and you know two games in one day, especially when you've got guys who are averaging thirty plus minutes a game. So I'll, <laughs> I'll try and answer that. You know, we're, we're going to get some rest. we got a couple of weeks there. We're going to you know, celebrate Christmas and then take some time off, get the guys back in the gym. We'll have three maybe three practices, I think, before we play. We'll come back on the 26th, play on the 29th. Um, get in the gym and try and get our legs back that we just <laughs> lost, right? Um, so Ian's looking forward to that. We'll get up and down the court some. I'm not, I, I think he'll tell you, we don't spend a whole lot of time running baseline to baseline. We do spend time in transition um, drills where we're going full court for some minutes and, and try and get some uh, endurance that way. Build, build them up without letting them know, right? Well, yeah, <laughs> it's, it's a lot more fun. I, yeah. I, I think they'll run a little harder that way, and I, that's the way I prefer it. And I, I think I just have no reason to put them on the line. We're not, you know, trying to win a race, but try and get the ball in their hand and, and make it real and get that uh, get that good endurance that we want for a game. The the second part of that question, I heard you say to Ian kind of, but I'll let him help answer this one. That, that one's really tough. You know, yeah. we haven't encountered that. Um, and we got guys logging minutes. A good thing about that, that's, that's varsity only. So we could go a little deeper in the bench, get a little more break here or there. We may use our timeouts a little differently to rest, more so than we normally would. Um, but that, that will be a challenge, you know. Um, two games in one day, that, that's, that's a test. Yeah. It really is to, to any athlete that's playing you know, 25 plus minutes, and you said 30. That's a lot for a big kid. Ian, you know, you grew up with your your group of seniors that you've played with. Um, what's it like having a, a you know the freshman and sophomore come into that kind of core group that you guys already have? How do, how's that transition work? Uh, you know, we gotta gotta take what we can get now. Now we've lost a few kids, but I think the freshmen they're really adapting to uh, our style of play and who we are, and I think I think they're fitting in really well. Uh, we just gotta welcome everybody with open arms and. Because we need everybody we can get right now. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, Coach, any any word on when you might get some of those those you know injured guys back? Well, we, so we got some good news uh, from Brady Rosenbaum this morning or today. Whenever I got here, um, he went to the doctor and it sounds like he's really really close. He actually got out of the boot. And he's practicing now. So he's on the court doing some things, but he can't play for a little while still yet. But that'll help your, your JV side for sure, given, given an extra guy down there. It absolutely will help us. Um, and then the rest of them are still kind of waiting. No, no uh, clear-cut uh, you know, response from the doctors. I do know Cree goes to the doctor tomorrow, and then he's got another doctor visit, I think, on the 19th. I'm hoping to get good news tomorrow and the 19th, and then we'll see what they – you know, what his doctors tell us on when he could play. That would be, you know, looking to get him some minutes on the JV varsity as soon as possible. I think he can help us at the varsity level. Yeah. But we may, you know, introduce him to the JV game and get him, you know, get his legs under him before we just throw him out to the wolves. <laughs> like Ian just said, we're going to take whoever we get. And uh, <laughs> he's going to have to – he's going to have to help us at some level. And Brady's going to help us too. I mean, just sheer numbers will help us. Right, right. So, you know, like I said, you're, you've got Borden, um, Doc Nash, you know, kind of a, an area area star as a, as a coach. Um, you know, he's, he's led a team to a state championship. You know, if you're looking for somebody to drop some plays, Doc's a, a great one at that. What, what kind of things do you take away from a, from a coach like that that, you, that has been in the area for as long as Doc has? Well, Just uh, on the coach's side yeah. of it. I mean, I'm a student of the game. I, I have tried to learn for 51 years everything I can about basketball. If someone wants to talk to me about basketball, I'll sit and listen. Um, and we, we steal and borrow everything that, that we see. So, you know, you go scout doc and, and you're watching and you're like, oh, that fits our personnel. So you steal it, you borrow it, um, you, you ask him why you do this or why you do that. And 
he either shares or he doesn't. Different coaches, right. you know, we're all idiots. <laughs> uh, I think everybody agrees with that, what we do and uh, try and do and the time we put into it. And, you know, it's just the love of the game and we just, we can't play no more, so we coach kind of sort of thing. And I respect all coaches. I, I know what they're putting into the, you know, but every game someone wins and someone loses. And, some are better at it than others, and Doc's done a great job for a long time, so I really respect everything he's done. And if, if he wants to share anything, I'll definitely try and, try and borrow it. <laughs> Ian, what are some, some uh, team goals and some personal goals that you have uh, for this, this year? Uh, for my personal goals, uh, I just go out every night, try to get double-digit rebounds and points, but I think the bigger thing is uh, that the team wins, so whatever I can do to benefit the team. and I think, I think it'd be good to go deep into the tournament, maybe get a sectional title, get into that regional. But I think that's, I think that's our team goals and my personal goals. That's, that's some pretty good ones there, Ian. Uh, last thing for you, Ian, I'm going to give you the, the, the airwaves. You can, you can give a shout-out to anybody you want. Um, I'm sure if you message your dad, I'm sure your dad knows that you're on the air. So I'm sure he, he uh, is out there listening. But anybody you want to give a shout-out to for this, this holiday season? I just want to give a shout out to everybody that's uh, got me to where I am today, my parents, my grandparents, and all my former coaches. Uh, they've got me to where I am today and the player I am. I can't thank them enough. Well, I want to thank both you guys for coming on tonight. Um, county, the county holiday tournament, right? That's what it's, I believe that's what it's called, the county holiday tournament, this Friday and Saturday. Um, the boys play the second game on Friday against Borden, who is the host. Um, that game will be live on the radio, and then Borden's um, live stream is doing it, so it'll be out there for uh, all of you to watch if you want. And then Saturday's game is dependent on uh, a win or a loss in that first game. Hopefully it's a win. If they win, they play at 7.30. If they lose, they play at 6. So that'll be a, a second game. That game will also be live on WWSR and on Borden Sportsnet. So if you're looking for those games, they're, they're out there for you to be able to get. Uh, thank you both to Ian and, and Coach Cummings for coming on. Um, and that's all the time we've got. So thank you guys very much. Great. Thank you. In 2012, the Washington County Community Foundation began working on its next big initiative, Education Matters. The goal of Education Matters is to increase the educational attainment of adults residing in our county. The initial focus has centered on adults. Do I have the camera? Do I need to hit film or what do you so, know? So, Doc is really good about sharing it. They don't have a camera, but he will share his video to you. Okay. It's just a matter of how long it takes him to get to you. Sometimes it's like he'll do it that night. Other times it's like 24 hours before he gets it to you. There's so much about that. But don't, uh...